Why the hell is everybody stopped in front of me? Now that we've safely come to a stop, the Toyota Camry, has there ever been a more appliance answer to driving? A car that, well, it gets respect, but it doesn't get love. This one is a hybrid, and today, well, I get a chance to take it out and drive it. All right, so this is a 2013 Camry, and gosh, I just, I don't like them. I get a chance to take a look at this. I respect this car, but I don't love it. And I've spent some time with it, and I'm trying to pinpoint exactly why. And honestly, I think it's because it's so good. It doesn't have any personality at all. It's a little frustrating, as a matter of fact, but, it is the car for people who don't want to think about their car. If you're not looking for a car that has some passion, some driving excitement, something interesting about them, this, the details have been sweated to the point, well, you just don't think about it anymore. You just don't care. It just fades away. It's just something you get into and you drive and then you get back out of it again. I don't want to undersell this car. It is amazing and it is fantastic. And I think for truly 90% of the people in the world, a car like this is everything they would ever need. But it doesn't ignite something in me. But today I get to take a look at the outside, the inside, get it on the road, talk about it with you. And I always answer two questions. When I'm looking at a car, I think to myself, one, would I recommend it to somebody else? And two, would I be proud to own one? And today, I'm going to answer those, but that'll be at the end. So up front, the Camry is, this is, I believe, the best looking Camry model. There were some in the 90s that were uh, very famous for their reliability, but looked a little bit like a jelly bean. And then somewhere after this, they started to get a little crazy. Toyota got tired of being called vanilla all the time and they started to put bigger grills on it and sport additions and just ended up kind of ruining it and doing some weird stuff inside too as, as well as the the styling in there and i think this is a fantastic looking vehicle good size grill a little bit of bright work good size headlights more form excuse me function over form and it just looks fantastic under the hood it's pretty standard you've got your hybrid engine under here, but it's worth noting they use hydraulic shocks. They don't have a prop rod under there. That's just a little too, didn't sweat the detail enough if you did that. Down the side, it's kind of boring. They do a little bit of bright work around the windows, blacked out in between. There's a little bumper strip right here and a crease, a slight, slight crease, not, not very noticeable, that grows, doesn't run through the door handles, and continues up and there's just a little bit of shape to it just enough to not be a slab i guess it's interesting to me that looking at this they did rise the rear up i, I honestly thinking about it before i recorded this i actually thought this was going to be more of a rectangle but it's not it's got just a little bit of a rake to it like the collar is popped on it and I think that's the thing about the styling down the side and at the front. This isn't beautiful. It's not an Italian suit. This is more like a freshly starched dress shirt on somebody that's wearing jeans. You know, it's not fancy, but it looks a little crisp. It looks a little nice. And around the back, I actually think this is the best rear end on a Camry. Big tail lights, just a little bit of styling to it, big trunk lid. I just think it looks fantastic. Now popping into the trunk, you get a really basic key here. It's got a few buttons on it. It, it looks like they cheaped out on this a little bit. This is the least impressive remote I've ever seen, but of course it's RFI inside. You press a button and guess what? The trunk opens and once you get in here, it's actually got a great amount of space 
looks like the rear seats lay down so you've got to pass through but you do lose a little bit of space simply because the battery's back here and while we're at the rear i will point out fuel filler on the driver's side as god intended now in the back seat you can imagine it's not terribly exciting two-tone seats right here nice and tan you know i like my tan interiors it feels a little airy and brighter but there's a window switch little bit of two different things right here so you've got a hard plastic a little bit softer touch you've got this fake gray wood trim i don't know what this is supposed to be but it's just a hard plastic with this silver hard plastic and this is just guess what it's more hard plastic but it's grained a little bit of their leather back here other than that you got some map pockets You've got some vents. You don't have any power outlets or anything else, but look at this. Once I get back here, this seat's where I sit, which is, I'm about 5'9". Look at the space. More, more than a fist. And above me, mm, just about, just about a fist worth. One thing I like about the back seat is you don't feel like you fall down into it. It actually feels like you sit up just a little bit. So often back seats are really low. This one's pretty nice. Now up front, it's more of the same door opens really kind of wide noticeably wide two-tone seats in here but again you've got this is not exactly soft it's like a hard grain that's slightly soft there's there's better out there this is grained but but hard softy touch right here kind of faux leather plastic right there and then the same two-tone fake gray wood trim right here with the silver underneath it but everything just kind of falls at hand there's no big surprises here all right once you close the door this is a really really nice place to be and it's impressive the build quality i'm going to go ahead and start it so push button start press the brake and because it's a hybrid it's started infotainment system right there buttons are on each side that means these over here on the right are a little bit far away that means the tune button is a little bit far away but the power button is right here hvac beneath it two cup holders this stupid gated shifter i hate this more of this get a little cubby right there and then more storage right here on an armrest that again doesn't move forward map pockets you know this is a little a little soft touch even get a little chain place down here and then very typically trunk and gas all right there i think they've been doing the same thing for 30 years now steering wheel pretty toyota standard but there's no surprises here and honestly it's really good looking you know if i am sitting here with my hand here and i just drop my arm look ends up right there right where the controls are it rests automatically in the right spot except for those door locks windows flawless this fingertip away now, i think most manufacturers have gotten that but let me switch the view here if i'm driving with my right hand that it's a little more than a fingertip away but it's a straight reach if you've got your hand right here that's right there it's this much of a move to turn on and off or adjust the volume if you don't do it from here that's really nice it's not the tiniest it's not the biggest but it's not down here or in the middle it's just right there look at the line of that construction and the fit of all of this i question some of the materials i don't like this i really am glad we moved away from silver everywhere i don't like this silver down here but honestly in the whole scheme of things that's really minor i like this area up here with this fake stitching 
this little ledge right here comes down to a little bit of bright work and then this right here and you press a button to pop open the glove compartment this is just super super nice and well designed and oh yeah it has a sunroof too so why don't we get this thing on the road so i can give you my opinion of it all right getting the camera on the road not expecting much you know i don't mean to be unfair the camry is an excellent car it is you know the only thing that would make this one better is if it was in like whirlpool white it is and it has been joked that it is an appliance and this level and certainly the newer ones they kind of take that even further you know automatic headlights automatic climate control automatic gearbox the hybrid system that turns on when you need it it's okay you know but you just it fades away the machinery fades away and you're left with just car you know what i mean it's like there's no driving enjoyment here the enjoyment from owning a camry is its subtle excellence and i mean i truly mean that this is not a luxury car but it's in some ways except for one glaring one it's luxury adjacent the materials could be better honestly this you know the the soft touch plastics are not even the softest touch that i've seen the more this shiny non-grained plastic than you would expect but it's all so carefully put together there's no rattles or creaks it has a a sense of solidity to it it is a little noisier than I would expect, and mostly it seems to be coming from the back, like tire noise. But other than that, it's a perfectly okay place to be. It rides slightly like a bigger car. More, that there's more, certainly it feels structurally rigid, but there's more of a thunk thunk to things when they go over bumps. It's very good. It's very, very good. And even diehard people who don't like Toyotas would have to admit, this is a very, very good car. And it makes it okay to drive. That's, you know, again, Toyota's not trying to make a sports car here. They're not trying to make the Mazda 6. The steering has a nice heft to it. There's no sense of what the wheels are doing, but it's got a pretty nice heft that lightens up as you drive. The steering wheel's thicker than you would think, and it's comfortable. Everything works wonderfully. The brakes have got a nice grip to them. They've got a good pressure to them, and they seem to stop pretty well. And it's got just a little bit of get up and go. You know, it feels pretty torquey. I'm actually running on the four-cylinder right now, and I don't know how much... how much horsepower it has, but it's got some gumption enough. Not a sports sedan, not a V6, but it's got a little bit of gumption and it's a muted, you know, so it's up there somewhere. It's in front of you. There is a big delay with the transmission. I will say that when I just stepped on it back there, there was a real one second delay before it actually ever started to do anything. And I imagine in an emergency situation, that could be a little terrifying, a little scary, a little scarifying, that where's my power? There's just a little, little of this in the chassis. It's not, it's buttoned down, but it's not as settled and as plush. That's the word I'm looking for. It's not as plush as, say, a Buick. And... It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's got, it's not as quiet as a Buick. It's not as plush as a Buick. It, it doesn't feel as planted, luxurious, long wheelbase, big car, heavy as a Buick. But it's not supposed to. I did expect this car to be a little more on the luxurious side than it is. It's got all the stuff. It's got, it's a perfectly adequate, technology, the 
ergonomics are spectacular. Really, they're 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 fantastic. They, why don't other people just copy this interior in some ways? But in terms of the ride, let me. Well, you get a sense of solidity and that thunk thunk and you know bigger body motions. There's almost a little a little nervousness to the chassis and not like it wants to play. Everything's too heavy for that. The controls are too heavy. The car feels big. Like the edge of the dashboard's way up there and the edge of the, the A pillars are pushed out. So you end up with a square. It it feels huge like you're only using half of it up here. It, so it never wants to play. It just feels kind of big, but a little nervous. I will also say it's got this little power meter here, and when you get into it and it has to kick on to the four-cylinder for the hybrid system, it's a little harsh. There's a there's a shutter through it. Um, it's not as smooth as you would think. Again, if you're waking up in the morning and you're trying to drive to your job, this is fine. It's a great car. I have trouble thinking of a mid-size car that would fit the vast majority of people better than this. And certainly when you not not when you start to look at it from your left brain checking off the boxes. You know, I'll mention this in a little bit at the conclusion, but like the Passat is an excellent vehicle. It's huge inside. It's, I, I think it probably has a better ride handling than this. I think it's more expensive and I'm not sure it's as reliable. My Accord, it is the preference I have, but it's not as quiet as this. And there's a little more quietness to the engine in this too. Just a, a little more refinement. The Mazda 6 has a far better interior, but the ride handling balance is more sport. It's not as good as this. It's noisier, I, I think. And the rear seat is going to be smaller. You've got the Ford Fusion. I'm a big fan of the Fusion, but the Fusion does have a little bit of an issue with being a little cramped to get in. And once you're there, it doesn't feel quite as, quite as big as this. And then the Malibu, I think it's an excellent, excellent car. I don't love the styling as much. I think the rear end is a little weak and some of the dash materials are a little weird. And then really, is it going to hold up like this? I mean, so once you go through all those items, kind of left with the Camry being that perfect compromise. And compromise can be a bad word. Compromise means that there's no real passion there, but this is compromised in its outstanding. Visibility of the gauges is outstanding. Again, ergonomics, everything is just great. But do you want to drive it every day? I don't know. I know I don't. So I don't want to be too harsh about this car. The fact is, it's absolutely fantastic. And I think there's very little argument. It's probably the best mid-size car out there. There's other cars with individual strengths. But in terms of doing everything excellent, this car pretty much nails it. And if you are looking for a Camry, you really can't go wrong. The, the fact is, is this is right for almost anybody, regardless of life situation and regardless of social demographics. If you are a individual, maybe just starting out and you need a car that's gonna last you forever, but you're not embarrassed to pull up in front of your office building in front of that you're not worried whether it's gonna start to get you to work, this would be perfect. If you're a young family and you've gotta throw some kids in the back cause you gotta put some Christmas presents in the trunk to get to grandma's, this would be perfect. If you need to take long trips, this would be eh, just about perfect. If you're an older person and you need something that's relatively affordable, frugal, cheap to insure, gets great gas mileage, handles well, is safe, and is gonna last you for 10, 15, 20 years, you can't do wrong than a Camry. It hits all of your left brain stuff. What it never does, never gets you excited. And I don't like the sport versions of these cars. It, it seems fake to me. I'm sure that people love them and they get all the benefits of all the reliability and everything, but it's got power. This, 
doesn't feel like it's intended for that. So that leaves me with my two questions. The first is, would I recommend this to others? And sorry, there's a truck going behind me. The answer is absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think if you want a car, you just don't have to think about that you trust. It's going to last forever. And it's a nice place to spend some time. You, you really can't go better than this. I would recommend this to almost anybody at any stage in their life. Number two is, would I be proud to own one? The answer is yes. There's all those left brain reasons. I could own one of these for 10 or 15 years and honestly never question my purchase. I know it's going to start in the morning. I know I'm going to be safe. I know it's going to be comfortable. There's going to be days when I want to feel a little aggressive and hey, maybe it'll let me. And there's days I just want to forget about the world and turn on a podcast and it's going to let me. But it is worth pointing out that when I got my latest car, I've done a review of my Accord, I could have gotten a Camry, and I didn't, because this car doesn't speak to me. I may have gotten a vanilla, boring Japanese car, but at least I got one that I'm happy to get into. This one, it's a car that just fades away and you, it just exists probably perfect for you, but you're never going to love it.